So yeah, we'll talk about the that time when we were in Jakarta. Yes. Yeah. So I remember it was very late at night, and then uh, we actually went to buy the some stuff. I can't remember why. I think laundry. I was buying undergarments. Yeah. So uh, it was really late, and then uh, you know while she was shopping, you know, for her stuff, and then I'm a guy, so there's nothing for me to do. So uh, well, I just sat around and I just look around lah, and that's when I realized right suddenly right. Uh, the cupboard, the, it was a lower cupboard at the bottom. The cupboard actually just opened by itself. So I was like, what? I was like freaked out, and then I went to tell her. Yeah, I didn't realize at all until he told me. Then I was like, mm, okay, maybe the the angle was down. That's why the cupboard opened. Then I started talking to a lady more about buying my stuff, and then suddenly I saw the cupboard close back. Then something is wrong already. If it's going down, how can it be going up again? Yeah. Then he was <laughs> like, oh my god, uh, faster buy your stuff, then we go out. Then after that, never mind, we go already, right? Then she wanna go to the toilet. <laughs> Urgent, ah. <laughs> then, uh, uh, and the shopping centre was actually closing because it was late at night, 9 plus. Then it, they were closing hours already. Time, uh. Yeah, so the, the everything was dark in the toilet. I walked in. Okay, maybe maybe it's dark because it's, the lights are off. Then the lights suddenly turned on. So I think, okay, maybe auto sensor light. So no problem. I went to continue in the loo. And then when I closed the door, the lights turned off again. So maybe the sensor turned off. Then once I'm done, I went out to the sink. It was not an auto sensor sink. Actually, it was those push sinks. Then suddenly the water turned on. Then I I just went to the same sink to wash my hands. And then I just went out and told him. It's so funny. This thing happened actually. Yeah, she told me in a very calm manner, and I was like freaking out because before that, you know, we saw the cupboard, and then next this thing in the toilet, you know, I wow, I was like, okay, let's really get out of this place because. It was really very freaky at that point of time. I didn't think about it much at that point of time until I went out and told him and he told me this is not normal, you know, I was like, oh yeah, now thinking back, it's quite creepy actually. Yeah, so this is <laughs> one of the experiences that we have because, yeah. uh, I mean for me, since young, I've been seeing a lot of such stuff lah, because, you know, I, I have like sleep paralysis and stuff. So yeah, a lot of times, ever since I was 14 years old, I would sleep. And then after that, right, I would just like, you know, there'll be a lot of voices and then the, you know, like a lot of people whispering and then there'll be one very loud one. And then, uh, it gets so loud that I wake up and then I cannot move and then I'll start seeing stuff. I mean, uh, she knows because uh, there'll be a lot of times uh, when I was with her, she would just see me sleeping there and then I'll be like convulsing there. Uh, yeah, he has his sleep paralysis moments sometimes. Um, when he sleeps, he will actually have a fit. Like he's trying to move but he cannot move. So I will pat him and wake him up. But Sometimes he really cannot wake up, we have to shake him and shake him, then he will wake up. And then then he will tell me about what? whatever nonsense I see. <laughs> yeah, all the weird things that he yeah. sees. Some of the things that I see is like, uh, like uh, when I was very young, the first sighting was actually, uh, was, uh, last time we sleep in, on the Tilam one. So, uh, I actually had my first sleep paralysis, I opened my eyes and then I see this little girl under my table. And I was like, I think it was the first time and I was like, oh shit. Uh, somebody please help me, you know, but you couldn't move and then that period of time was very long. So, uh, <clears throat> after that I woke up and I can, you know, finally move, I went to tell my father. The interesting thing is, uh, a few years later, my father actually saw the same little gun at the table, so uh, that's, that's another story. But uh, one incident I remember was, because I stayed in the same room as my dad, so, you know, when you wake up, you know, that kind of idea, like, you wake up, you see stuff, you cannot move, I remember that time, my father was outside watching TV and then I was, you know, lying down there. So uh, when that, when the event happened, yeah, I opened my eyes and I couldn't move. I saw this faceless dude thing, you know, standing by my door, and he was like slowly moving closer to me. Then, uh, so you know, the only thing we do when we were young is you know we try to call our father like, But I was like, you know, but I mean, couldn't get any voice out. Uh, then after that, then I saw my door open. Then I was like very happy, you know, because my father poked his head out, and then I was like, oh yes, he, he maybe he heard me calling for him. Then. Uh, he closed the door back again. Then I was like, oh my god, why? Why you close the door again? Why couldn't you hear me? Then I was like severely sad. Uh, then I continued like, trying to struggle and calling. Then he opened the door again. And then this time he actually on the light. He on the light and he looked at me like weirdly for a while before he shake me awake. And that's why I finally be able to move and I tell him like, why did you close the door? That's now, oh my god. Yeah. So I have a lot of different uh, things that I've seen. The common ones that I've seen is uh, one lady with the anklet around her leg. Uh. They, this one is the one that actually touched me. She will like shake me in the middle of the night. Another one, another kind that I always see is actually the people around me, right? You will see them like they are lying down there sleeping or whatever with you. But after that, right, when you're in that stage, right, it seems like they are, how to explain? Uh, 
they will be like shadows, they will be like awake, suddenly you just see them, you blink your eyes one shot, then suddenly you see them standing over like that. And then you blink your eyes again, they'll be like erratically moving around the room. I tell you, that is the scariest one. Just heard in the last video, uh, we have Mr. E.T., we have Mr. Eugene Tay. Eugene, why don't you go first? I, I love the story a lot. Um, they mentioned the very first mall, and that is actually Grand Indonesian Mall in mm. Jakarta. Uh, it's a very big mall, and it's one of the main mall. If you go to Jakarta, that's like the, pl the place you go down and get all your stuff. Uh, again, I, I, I take the, the story very much as from a very from the point of view as being very entertained rather than looking at the whole story with a very analytical mind. Um, I, I, I particularly like how Yuki's reaction was to what I would have reacted as a haunting. You go into, a, you know, you see the cupboard open and close and the minute uh, Mel saw that, to him is it must be the hantu. Babe, what are you doing? Let's go, let's go, right? And for her, it's like, oh, I need to go to the toilet first. Ha ha, a jet lah. You know, that kind of very carefree ignorance and... Uh, it's almost like if you don't believe in a hantu, you won't actually be scared. In fact, it would have appeared to be non uh, scary at all if Mel didn't tell her, do you not find anything wrong with it? Because it is not an auto sensor, it's not an auto tap. You know? Then she goes like, oh yeah, huh? you know? So I mm. guess what I'm trying to say about the whole story is most times if you're not savvy with supernatural, you're not I guess a fan of Supernatural Confessions and you're bombarded every day with hantu news, mm. you may not even realise that the experiences you have are supernatural in nature. So many of you out there could have actually experienced the supernatural but just don't know. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? Ignorance is bliss. If you exactly. don't know anything about hantus, then the one that's right behind you is not going to bother you. Exactly, right? So no fear, nothing at all. And for Mel, uh, his story was he has a lot of uh, sleep paralysis. And you know how I think that's where E.T. and I differs very greatly upon. He believes sleep paralysis is scientific. And I believe sleep paralysis, science is just trying to bullshit us and trying to shoehorn an explanation to it because it's a common phenomenon. But sleep paralysis for those who have experienced it and they've seen entities, I believe that story more than the scientific approach. Uh, I like the way he goes, yeah, you know, like they always use science to bullshit us, right? That's exactly what the scientists are saying about us. They're like, you know what? All these like paranormal junkies are always trying to bullshit us with their superstitions and all their supernatural beliefs. But no, it's always the science. It's a scientific conspiracy. These scientists gather together, they cannot explain. They just come up with reasons and say, yeah, men in white coat say so. It must be true. And the rest of us just want to lap it up because someone else said so. You know, you just hey, allow you us say, to... You're saying me, is it? Nah? You're saying me, I'm here, no? Mm. <laughs> uh, not the king, you're saying me, is it? Yeah. I love how Trishula <laughs> Barras, sorry to interrupt, bro, likes to say, oh, Tim has company again. Last week, he also said, you know, I had company behind me as well, right? So, uh, Trishula, I'm going to be... Uh, uh, giving you the responsibility of getting rid of it, okay? Or at least uh, tell it if it's behind me that it needs to maintain some form of social distancing. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, were there any other parts of uh, Yuki and Mel's story that you want to comment on, Eugene? Uh, no, I, just one part. Uh, when we talk about sleep paralysis and then mm. um, we imagine things. Remember he said he saw a girl under the table and later on he says his father also <laughs> saw that same girl. So if science have the explanation for sleep paralysis and it's all in your mind, then clearly his father couldn't have seen the same spirit or the same entity. Ah, so, yeah. okay. so to me, that is a must be the hantu story. All right. Well, it's funny you mentioned about sleep paralysis. I know the gentleman uh, on the opposite end of you loves to talk about sleep paralysis. Mr. E.T., you took a, a very close paying, uh, well, a close listen and view of this story by Mel and Yuki. What did you come up with? Okay, interestingly, when the, the first part, right, when they talk about the cupboards opening and closing, right, the first thing that came to my mind was to be gremlins. So I was waiting for him to say, like, maybe he saw something like a mogwai coming out from somewhere from the cupboards, but no, la, there wasn't. La. Okay, <clears throat> so now back to the CSI. Um, I won't rule out that it is not the hantu. What does that okay. mean? I won't rule out that it's not the hantu. What is up with all these double negatives? Which Adema. means you think it... In other words, I won't rule out that it's not the hantu basically means you're saying it could be the hantu. 
Uh, it could be. It right. could not be. It, why, so know, why yeah. don't you just say, I'm saying it could be the hantu instead of I'm not saying it's not the hantu. Because that's me. I'm the <laughs> one with the code like and everything, no. right? <laughs> Need to try he, and sound smart, right? Actually, I wrote that. that uh, I, I can read also, I confirm nor deny the <laughs> paranormal. I'm yeah, trying to be a politician. Yeah. Trying to be a politician. E.T. is like the shaggy of the paranormal world. You know what I mean? You could show him a ghost, you'd be like, wasn't me. It wasn't me, right? <laughs> Everything I just deny. It wasn't me. <laughs> okay, so so All the right. reason for that statement was because when you know you know when we talk about the toilets, the the light going on and off, and the, the water mm. coming on, even though it's not the auto type, right? I mean, I'm not saying what, but you know, some countries maybe like Indonesia, sometimes maybe there's some electrical disruption, and sometimes water pressure, even with those kind of you know those physically pressed kind of taps. Water do come out uh, from from it sometimes uh, uh, because it may be faulty. So so that that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but what what intrigued me of their account is actually the accurate description of the sleep paralysis. It is exactly what you hear and see uh, when you experience sleep paralysis, and its description of how, the, the the loss of human functions. Like you know you can't scream, you can't feel. It's ex- exactly like that. Okay. Um. So so my my conclusion is he probably was a very physically tired person. I, I mean I need to ask him if he does he have enough sleep and stuff like that because when someone goes into sleep paralysis, usually the physical body is very very tired. Although his um mind may still be very awake. Um. And, and I like how his story talk about his dad because that reminded me of where I had sleep paralysis. I saw my dad coming up to my room. Right. Then suddenly I couldn't move. I can't jump. I want to scream, but I couldn't scream. So my dad came in, looked at me. And then my dad went to close the door. La. I thought he was coming to save me. Well, he went to close the door and of all the things that my, my dad did that. Well, then I can't chong. But, you know, after a while, like, like him, I got a bit panicked. But somehow I snapped out of it. Okay, but one, one, one tip I want to share with you guys. Uh, I read it somewhere. And I had, I had a few more episodes of sleep paralysis because I was physically tired. That book say that when you're in sleep paralysis, focus on moving your little finger, that pinky. And somehow your soul just comes back to your body. It leaves the astral plane and then, you know, you're back to the, the mortal world. So, okay. remember so that move your finger, not pull my finger. No, no. <laughs> don't pull my finger is No, but bro, you different. can't even move your finger. You've got to focus on trying to move that pinky. Yeah, focus. you move your pinky. What if you feel a presence like wiggling your pinky as well? Then how? Oh, that one must be pochukang already. Lah. Kore the idong or something. <laughs> oh, hey, just a... Let's... There's a... Mm. Sorry, 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 I just because uh, you guys uh, Et mentioned the, uh, the 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 pressure of the water, right? The yeah. the drawer, how the one that opened by itself and then closed. I don't think yeah. it's an electronic drawer, right? Well, I think so. I, how did I it open and a, then I, close back again? Yeah, that's why I said I think it's some gremlin down there, lah. A mock wire. The fella kept a mock wire inside there, so the gremlins are inside there. So it's so it's not the hantu. It's the gremlin, which are, which it? means Et, in other words, would rather blame something on a gremlin, right? Then actually admit it could be the hantu. Wow. Seriously, Eugene, what do we have to work with like this, Law? I don't know. You're going to feed him more alcohol, man. No, you know, there's, like, there's, there's, there's this study called cryptozoology. They're called yeah. the study of hidden animals. So it's not, it may not be the hantu. It may be it's this. It's just a creature yeah. that we, science have not found out yet and documented. Exactly. So it's on the, the gray area of, okay, sure. Okay, you know, this I is Tomorrow called... he'll be saying, no, la, it's Shrek, la. Or yeah, maybe wait, wait, Milo wait, wait. and Stitch. La. I, I, I still have one last part on, on this story. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I, like, pressure. I like that part about him talking about the whispers he hear. Okay, <laughs> and, it gets, and it gets louder and louder and louder. Right? The moment he said that, right, it really sent tingles down my, my, my spine. It was very chilling because these were the exact same voices I used to hear when I was younger. And it's the exact same thing. You hear whispers around. You cannot understand what they're saying. It gets louder and louder and louder, right? It gets so loud that all these people are talking in my head. And then all of a sudden, my mind goes blank. I have no explanation for it. But what I noticed was every time this happened, right, it was when I was trying to study or studying for an exam or something, like. Right? So I think stress may have caused that. Or maybe stress may have brought energy level down and maybe these entities were trying to communicate with me. I really don't know. Oh, entities. But because... Mm. But because, wait, I haven't finished another uh, statement, but because of that stress uh, uh, um, times that I had, I, I, I like to relate it to that. Lah. That is probably the stress that, that caused me to, to experience such, such stuff. Yeah. I've got a so is he blaming on the entities or the stress? <clears throat> Sorry. He went through all sure. these different ways and yeah, then yeah. I'm like, what, what, so what is it? You see, if it's just entities, then it shouldn't happen only when I'm stressed. Ah. 
yeah, so it may be a psychological thing. How, okay. how about, you know, because the HDB, the walls are very thin and then it conduct, sound can conduct and travel across. So Bro, if a lot of people talking. This was then in the, the same know? school that you were with me, la, SRJC. Oh, la. <laughs> ah, that happened to me at the bench down there. La. SR is haunted. We all yeah, I that. think so. I think so too, yeah. SRJC? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, when we go back to doing an episode on schools or specifically JC's, I'm sure uh, it's not just the two of you, but many of our Supernatural Confessions uh, viewers would be able to add in their stories as well. Reach yeah. out to us at SupernaturalConfessions.com. So, Hantu, Sorry, not the Hantu. Thing, one thing to add on to this, uh, there's this uh, other uh, series called Evil, E-V-I-L. Uh, and in the, yes, in the show... Yes, I've heard of that show. And coming, I'm glad you like it. Good. Who introduced it to you, huh? I think it's this guy called Timo, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he's like, you know, I want to tell you about this show, e Evil. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally forgot, but it's coming to Netflix and uh, we're going to all watch it together and group group watch. But this, remember the main character, the lady? She had sleep paralysis, right? Mm. And she is like E.T. She's, she's a woman of science and she doesn't believe in the supernatural. So when she was having sleep paralysis, uh, what her scientist or her, was it psychologist colleague told her, write a piece, write words and paste it on your ceiling because when you are in your dream state, the part of your brain that cannot process words, uh, you will see a, just a blur patch and that's when you know you are asleep. Bro, why are you spoiler the show? No, like, that was one of the cool la. things about the show. Yeah, right. That's not a spoiler. Can la, you that's imagine just... if like when I introduced the show to you, I told you about all these things? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot more to watch. Go, go, go watch it. It's good. Evil is good. 